So uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022 meeting. Um, we'll go the special meeting first. So call to order, uh, Joanne. Here. And Fiorella. Here. And Gar is here. And, um, so have, let's have Jack uh, go over the uh, DHCD flood survey funding stuff. And so, so, this is, so, so this is great news. So um, if you remember, we had been given um, about $15,000 in a grant, in the same type of grant from DHCD probably about six to eight months ago, six to nine months ago, uh, strictly for Monotomy Manor. Um, the DHCD ended up deciding to expand that survey to all of our developments, um, which is which is great because it gives us that much more data um, to, to make sure that we're as climate resilient as possible. So this additional grant funding will fund that um, the expansion of that survey. So again, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be funded through Arlington Housing Authority funds. It's going to be funded through this special money, sustainability money through DHCD. Go ahead, Fiorella. Um, wait, so does that mean that that's going to be like delayed for monotomy or so just kind of going to happen at the same time, the survey? Mm -hmm. And this is a different survey than the window survey. Okay. Um, I know, but is it still going to be delayed because of that or? It, it could be. Um, I'll have to get some additional details as far as when they're going to give us um, some, some more results or when the results are going to be available. Uh, but, but I haven't received an update lately as far as when that information is going to be available. But it's very, it's very likely that it will be delayed because of this. But um, it's, it's still a good thing to get this data from, from all that development. Yes. Um, Go ahead. Uh, yes, I would think that that would be important to know at Drake Village since they have a body of water going right by them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But especially in Monotomy Manor, I hope it's not delayed very much because already sections of it are in a floodplain and people have flooded basements and so forth. So that we get the study done that we can look for funds to remediate. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if they provide um, different types of suggestions or, or options and, and, you know, that will help us in our pursuit of, like you said, finding ways to, to fund and, and act on it. Any other questions or discussion? It's it seems like a no-brainer to me. Am I missing something, Jack? Easy, right? No, this is this is good. This is a good thing. Okay. Is if someone wants to make a motion. I make a motion to pass the uh, accepting what is it, accepting the award for D, from DH City for the flood survey. I second it. Okay. Um, all in favor. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Gar is a yes. I guess we are done with our meeting, our special meeting. So do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I make a motion, motion. to adjourn. I second that. Okay, seconded by Fiorella. And uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Gar is a yes. So meeting, for, special meeting is adjourned. Let's see, let me see if Nick's, he's, he's still in no man's land. He's not getting back to me. So uh, Jack, do you, should we call to order the next meeting, right? Yes. Okay. The hearing, yeah. Uh, call to order the public hearing for the 2023 annual plan. Uh, call to order Fiorella. Here. Joanne. Here. And Gar is here. Um, I'm gonna let Jack take over now and explain this the annual plan and so so there's a lot that goes into the annual plan we look at a lot of different things whether it's our maintenance department and the ways in which we can um, use data and find ways to improve as well as to indicate to not only the board but the public what what our processes um, well in each the whatever our processes are um, so what I'm going to do first is um, Chris Partridge the director of maintenance and modernizations on the call um, I'm going to hand the floor over to him just so he can give you an overview of, um, of the maintenance department and, and what they're doing, what they are planning to do for the next year.
Chris is, yep, there he is. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks for having me, everyone. Jack, thank you. Um, good evening. I wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity to speak about the maintenance initiatives at the Arlington Housing Authority as part of our annual plan. Uh, our department objective is to continue to meet resident needs by exceeding standards set by the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development. Some of our key maintenance initiatives uh, that we've been working on this year uh, are we've decentralized the maintenance department by adding two working foremen. Um, Roland Demers, our former superintendent of maintenance, is now in an expanded role of assistant director of maintenance, um, and he's doing a great job, along with our maintenance clerk, Catherine Burns. Uh, these additions have led to a streamlined communication process and an enhanced work order flow and a better, better resident experience. Our maintenance uh, continues to be on the forefront of our integrated pest management system. We are communicating with residents to ensure the process has as much traction as possible and residents have a clear definition of the protocol. Our department has an ongoing partnership with the Massachusetts Association of Authority Maintenance Supervisors. They provide training and education for our staff to better prepare them for the maintenance demands of this modern LHA. Um, we are finding creative ways to access revenue streams that will bol bolster the equipment and education needs of our staff. We have been able to take full advantage of grants and opportunities from agencies like MIMA and MIAA to keep our buildings safe and sanitary. Our team commitment to our economy and grounds have been enhanced. AHA maintenance staff are on standby 24-7, 365 days a year for any snow or ice event. As a result, our properties now can be enjoyed by residents and safely traveled through the warm or cold weather. And finally, with uh, guidance from the AHA Board of Commissioners and the Executive Director, Jack Nagel, management now conducts individual monthly maintenance meetings with tenant presidents. This process allows for a more customized and focused approach to the tenant maintenance requests, and this has yielded positive results to date. Thank you again for the opportunity um, to serve the Arlington Housing Authority, and we look forward to using the uh, annual plan and maintenance repair plan to the residents' advantage. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris, we, can you? You're going to stay on, right? In case yes, when we open up a public hearing, maybe you can jump in if Jack needs you. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Jack, you want to keep and going? So, yeah. So, in, in the next thing I wanted to do is just to briefly. Uh, go over just some of the different funding sources that we've been able to acquire just to give you some better insight into the, the capital plan and, and maybe even some of the additional flexibility that we'll have moving forward. Um, just to, just to um, as again, as a, um, just to remember what we have. So the town ARPA money that we received for capital improvements, those capital improvements being for the Monotony Manor window replacement project was two and a half million dollars. Um, in addition to that, we received ARPA formula funding from the state in $906,131. Um, we additionally just got news from DHCD that we received uh, targeted ARPA funding uh, for three projects, uh, three uh, electrical panel upgrades. And right now, based off of current estimates, that will, um, that will, will save the state authority at least one over dollars, if not more. Um, in addition to that, we have the Department of Housing and Community Development create a placemaking grant that's um, going to be up at, at Drake Village, and that was a $500,000 grant. Um, also, we have Community Preservation Act funding um, that totals over $1 million, and that's um, for three different projects. As for the door replacement project up at uh, Drake Village, that's for the electrical panel upgrade at the Hauser Building and for... Um, and for the window replacement project at Menominee Manor. And we, we hope to apply for additional funding next year. In addition to that, we have CDBG funding. Um, that's, it's still pending HUD approval, uh, but if approved, it will, be, uh, it will total $600,000 for two separate projects. Well, six, total $600,000, um, 250,000 of that being for, um, for the roof replacement project and, and $350,000 of that being for the fire alarm system upgrade. At, at the housing building, if, if again, if HUD, if HUD approves. Um, in addition to that, we have a pending HILAP um, grant request through DHCD, and we hope to receive um, some news about that maybe in the next month or so. Also, we, we've received uh, sustainability, we've received sustainability funding. Um, like, like I indicated 
for the flood survey, which totals about hundred thousand dollars. And um, I missed it here, but we also received about I think it's about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in um, compliance reserve funding through the state too, which funds asbestos abatement and other important types of um, additional components that are needed in a lot of projects. Um, so with that being said, um, the total amount of, of funding that we've received is is um, is, is over six point seven million dollars. Um, and, and, we're, and it's going to continue growing. And just to give you some, some additional insight into that or something to take into consideration is that each year we get about $900,000 in formula funding for our actual capital funding from DHCD. And over five years, that would be about four and a half million dollars. So we've, we've already, you know, through some of the different initiatives of, of the board and, and others, we've been able to um, surpass the amount of money that we would have already gotten uh, from DHCD over a five-year period. So we're going to continue pushing and, and use that money to um, do all the necessary work on the upgrades that we, we know are, are so vital to our, um, to our residents having a safe and healthy experience in our buildings. Uh, with that being said, you know, I think as you looked at the, at the annual plan, the capital improvement plan this year, you saw a lot of electrical panel upgrade projects. You saw a lot of fire alarm and fire alarm system upgrades. And I think you know, with the fire at Chestnut Manor, um, it, it brings even more to light the importance of these projects. So we're, we're very happy to be able to get these projects all in there. And we're, we're hopeful that we can get them moved up in the chain as, as quickly as possible so that all um, upgrades can happen in, in, in a timely fashion. But we are very, very pleased with DHCD's target opera, targeted opera award, award, awards because that's going to move those electrical panel upgrade projects up just that much quicker. Also, you'll probably notice too in the capital improvement plan, in the fifth year, there's a, there's a handful of projects that are hanging on by, by essentially just a thread. And the reason why we did that is because there's been just so much, um, this was before even we got the ARPA formula funding, we weren't sure exactly what we were gonna get from DHC or from some of these other sources. So we wanna to try to get as many projects in our capital plan as possible, because um, it's gonna allow us to act quicker and more effectively once we're able to secure that funding. So we're kind of, we're betting on ourselves here, um, getting them in the capital plan, even if it's just by a little, by, by a hair, so that we can move them into, um, try to get them moving forward as quickly as possible. Um, to, Chris already went over some of the different maintenance initiatives, our maintenance goals and plan. Um, you know, what you'll notice too is at the end of the, the end of the annual plan, there's a survey that, that puts us in comparison to not only the state, other state house, other housing authorities across the state, but um, other large housing authorities in this region. And by and large, we do pretty well, but it's always a, it's a, it's a great tool uh, for Chris, myself, um, and, and Myra um, to sit down and try to understand the ways in which we can better our, our services and, and hopefully do better, even better on, on future surveys. Um, so we're, we're excited to see what, where those results go, and we're, we're confident that they will improve more and more over time. Um, yeah, so I guess at this point, um, if there's any, any questions or comments. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me see if anyone from the board has I, I know I do, but I'll let Fiorella I'll go first. Um, this one's for Chris. Chris, is there any policies on... Um, like what companies we use. I've noticed in the past in the budget that we use a lot of companies that are in Arlington. So are we um, reaching out to make sure like we're making the most affordable uh, choices? Uh, yes, Fiorella, thank you. Um, cost effective, effectiveness is always at the forefront of our decision. Um, and by state code with a lot of our service contracts, uh, chapter 30B, we have to uh, comply with the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. So all the monetary price, price thresholds, depending upon the size of the project, are carefully analyzed and looked at. And then when the decision is made, it ultimately comes down to price. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a great question. But we do uh, also have to take into account like the proximity to the Arlington Housing Authority and their ability to be able to respond um, to certain things, especially if it's like an emergency or... Uh, that type of thing. How many? So, how many within the towns around us? Is there a lot of other towns that go into this bidding process, or is it, you know? Yeah, and the uh, the state actually has a great website. Uh, it's the OSD website, um, and all the vendors are already pre-approved by the state. So that's one of the tools that we frequently use. 
Um, or if we don't use that, we traditionally put it out to bid like some of the larger projects where you advertise it. And they're really contractors from all over the state and they all have to be approved by DHCD for the larger scale projects. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Joanne? Yes. Um, <clears throat> first, I noticed that we had a big increase because of need in, in legal fees. So I assume we'll hopefully go back to it's $10,000 a year. Jack? And I, yeah, and, and I'll have to look into that, Joanne, but um, there, there was a time where um, there was a backlog and, and we were we were processing some of the different uh, fees associated with the attorney. Um, so we, there may have been just a lot processed at once and that might be what, what's reflected there, uh, but I can, I can look into that and get back in touch with you. Also, did all of the tenant presidents sign off on the annual plan or is that still? That's okay. correct, they do, yep. And they have. We, we sit down with all the tenant associations and review the annual plan. Okay. And I, I, I read in the past one of these in which um, the a lawyer from Legal Aid also signed off on an annual plan, or is that a different plan? I'm, I'm not aware of, of, of a legal aid signing off on the annual plan. Yeah, it's a, it was a legal aid lawyer who signed off on it. So I don't know. I can go back and get in touch with you. Um, it was very thorough, by the way. Um, I did have a question, or I just wanted to comment, I should say, on one of the projects. I think there, it's at the end. These are the ones which are still trying to develop. And one is energy or water saving initiatives. I use the, um, the rain barrels down at an autumn Manor. I was amazed at how much water was in these barrels. Um, and um, hadn't even rained in a while. And I think that might be something good. They're not expensive, I, at least the ones I saw on the internet. That might be something we could expand on because there are probably other reasons to have water outside uh, cleaning and stuff like that. Water also, was, um, it looked wonderful. It was very clean. Of course, they have a, a grate in the top. Um, so um, also, as you know, we had some issues uh, with a couple of them, and they need to have their uh, faucets replaced. Is that possible to do soon? We're watering the garden. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. We, um, yes. Um, and, and Chris and I have talked about that, and the Tenant Association also brought that up this month at the meeting. So we're 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 looking into that, and we'll, we'll generate a we'll create a plan. Yeah, you can just order them, right? And I don't think they're very expensive because barrels aren't that expensive um, because we can't use them, and they're just sitting there with all this water in them. But anyway, that seems like a good strategy to cut back on on a water bill, which is very expensive, I think. The last thing I wanted to ask is, um, that we talked about a week ago, what, uh, you're talking about vacancy refurbishment. What's happened to those 18 units? Would they be ready soon or in Chestnut Mountain? I don't foresee them being, I don't foresee them being ready um, in, the, in, in the near future. Um, okay. We're, right now, we're, we're, our worst case scenario, we're, we're you know, essentially what we plan with the insurance company is worst case scenario would be by January of uh, 2023. Uh, we hope it's much sooner than then, but that's kind of, that's what we've, our communication with the state and the insurance company is kind of a worst case scenario. And that's, that's all water damage. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Largely water damage. It's not fire. It's water damage. Okay. Thank you. Fiorel, any more questions? Yeah, um, Joanne just reminded me of it where all the tenant associations signed off. I do see that there's no date to see if like there was a quarterly meeting to discuss the uh, annual plan with tenant associations. I'm not sure what you mean, Fiora. Um, over here, over here. Um, sorry, one second. 
There we go. Uh, B, hold quarterly meeting with LTO or RAB to review the draft of the annual plan. So, that, so there are some letters in the annual plan um, that in which the, the tenant presidents have signed off on indicating that they did, um, they did review, discuss and suggest projects relative to the annual plan. And so, and we did meet with them and um, Chris was there. So, I mean, if you want to, if you want a second, uh, <laughs> a second view, a second set of eyes, he was there as well. I'm cool. Honest. Yeah, there was just no date for it. So I was just wondering. Uh, I, have, I have just a comment, I guess, or a question. The, I thought the survey part was very informative. And uh, I, I think because, you know, the, the, we do do pretty well uh, compared to our, our peer group and the state averages. But I think, I think we can even do better. And I think we will based on you guys in, implementing uh, like the decentralization and the tenant meetings. And, um, and we were, keep in mind that probably when the service was going, the survey was was going, we were in a transition from a, one executive director to another, Chris started. So I think, we, I think we're gonna only go up is what I'm saying. Is that, is that, is that how you guys see it? That, that, that's the way that we see it uh, based off of when this survey was done, I think. It's not while we've been really in these positions and we feel that we're, we're hope, our, our hope and what we feel is, is that the survey will improve as a result yeah, of some of the measures. Right. Okay, so I guess the next step would be to encourage public participation, is that right? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that up to you, Jack, since you control the board. All right, if, um, so I, I guess probably the best way to move forward is if somebody does uh, wanna participate, they could just raise their, raise their hand. I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing um, any hands raised, Dar. I don't, I don't see the tenant presidents on that. Yeah, I don't see anyone either. Where, did they know about this meeting? What? It was posted at all the, all the developments. Hmm. Okay, so now I, yeah, I don't know what to do. Um, should we have a motion to approve the 2023 annual plan? Is that next? I no, motion no. to approve, sorry. <laughs> oh, God, <Vera. laughs> a motion to approve the 2023 annual plan. And then a second. And all in favor, Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And Gar is a yes. So we are done with the uh, agenda. So now a uh, motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. And I second it. Second. So uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And Gar is a yes. Uh, the public hearing meeting for, with the 2023 annual plan is adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Jack and John Greco, too. Thank you. All right. See ya.